what happens when God says no? What happens when God says no? I want to preface this video first by saying and stating these things right here. I believe we can ask God anything according to his will and we can receive it. I believe God wants and will give the best to his people. I believe if we have faith, nothing is impossible with God. That is what I believe. So I will get that out of the way first because I don't want to leave room for the enemy. Because sometimes when you're speaking about something that's not so popular, the enemy try to distort and contort things. But I wanted to get that out the way because I want you guys to know what I believe. Now we're going to deal with this here. What happens when God says no? We have been taught that we can just say things, that we can decree and declare things, that we can name it and claim it, that we can blab it and grab it. All these, all, all these things, jargons and things that we have been doing. And let me say this. I totally, once again, believe in decreeing and declaring the things of God. Remind you, the things of God. So I believe those things. A lot of people, they take it upon themselves to name things and they just speak things. And it's not always in the will of God. And what happens is when we do things outside of the will of God, there is consequences for our actions. So instead of demanding God for stuff, we need to be going boldly. Yes, boldly to the throne of grace to ask God not to demand him. Like if he owe us something, we feel like we have this supernatural ability to just demand God and to just speak whatever we want. And God is obligated to do it. And that sets a lot of people up for failure. So instead of demanding God, we need to be asking God, God, what are your thoughts? What are your desires for me? Because I don't know everything. God knows, but we don't know everything. Cause most of our desires are unnecessary anyway. We think we want some things that's good for us, but it could be to our detriment. Many times we are moving away from prayer to the state of demanding God. But that is not biblical. We need to get back to the request. The Bible says clearly in Philippians 4 and 6. Let me read for you. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, not some things, in everything by prayer and supplication. Supplication means asking, not demanding. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. Let your request, not your demands, not our demands be made known unto God. So let me ask you something. Are you more likely to give someone something if they ask you for it or if they demanded you to give it to them? Let's think for a moment. Are you more likely to give someone something if they demanded it from you or if they asked you for it? And what happened is I believe that God wants us to reverence him just because he gives us power and authority. Doesn't mean that we go ballistic with it. Doesn't mean that we minimize who he is. I've actually seen people like the man and God, God, you said it and you gotta, and you must No, no. Where is the reverence for God? Just because we ask for something or just because we speak something, it does not mean God is obligated to make it happen. I cannot stress that enough. Yes, we want the blessings. Yes, um, God wants to do great things for us. But everything we speak, it doesn't mean it will happen. I've seen people literally go through depression, beloved. I've seen people go through depression because they have prayed, demanding and, and, and telling God, speaking so many things. And then they get frustrated and they go through depression because it didn't happen. And what happens is we don't know how to accept that some things might be no. I've seen people who have loved ones die after they pray healing over them. I had people who've been sick for years and people have been decreeing the declining and saying, you're well, you're well, you're well. And that person is not well. 
we have to face the truth, beloved. There are some things that God is just not going to do because he's sovereign. And it does not mean he can't do it. So let's make that clear. It does not mean he can't. But could you imagine serving a, a just God who just says, yes, whatever we blabber out or whatever we say, could we imagine how much danger that will be to ourselves if we just blabbering out anything we want and expect God to do it? No, it doesn't work that way. And the thing about it is, is when the thing doesn't happen and when the thing doesn't come to fruition, the first thing people say is, oh, you didn't have enough faith. No, that's not it, beloved. Sometimes God says, no, it has nothing to do with my faith. It has nothing to do with the person's faith. Sometimes God's sovereign will take precedent over what we are asking. And we have to tell people that we have to let them know that because if we just keep telling them to speak out things and whatever we speak is going to happen, like God is some genie, we just rub and whatever we say, so be it. That is not biblical. We are taking it out of context, beloved. And I know, I know, I know some people going to come at me and they're going to come at me with Romans 4 and 17, where it says God called those things to be not as though they was. But look at the context. God called those things to be not as though they, they were. It never said we call those things to be not as though they were. Come on. If we just read the scriptures and read it in context. I know some of you will say, well, Ruby, I got another one, Job 22, 28, where it says decree and declare thing. But listen to who was speaking at. God was not speaking at one of Job's friends, actually one of his friends that God reprimanded was speaking that. Come on, let's get biblical and let's get right today because we want to throw and pick verses. And we're not explaining to the people in detail. And then when things don't happen, they're turning their backs on God. And I know. I know somebody might say, well, what about Mark 11? Yeah, I could say to the, the mountain, th be thrown into the sea. Beloved, read it in context. Read it in context. Read it and get an understanding. It doesn't mean that I could just speak out. Right now, I'm a millionaire. I don't see millions in my account. <laughs> you understand? Let's be honest to people. Yes, we can have ambitions and we can speak positive. Yes, I love that. Actually, I get up in the morning and I speak positive, the positive words of God over my life. I decree, you know what I decree and declare? Let me tell you the things I decree and declare. I decree and declare what God said I can have and what he's already given me. That's the things I decree and declare. I don't make up and conjure up my wants in my mind and start decreeing and declaring it. Sometimes God says, no, you don't believe me. Let me share this with you. God said no to David. Ah, yeah. God said no to David. David's son was dying and David was asking God to heal his son and God did not heal his son. His son died. <laughs> that's a no. That, that sounds like a no to me. I'm quite sure David could have said. Oh God, I'm quite sure he could have been reading out and singing all the songs and the hymns that we read in the book of Psalms, but that did not save his son's life. Ah, oh, y'all don't believe me? <laughs> when Jesus was in the garden, Jesus said, oh father, let this cup pass for me. The Bible said Jesus went several times, multiple times. He prayed that prayer, let this cup pass for me. But that wasn't the will of the father. And thank God that wasn't the will of father, because where would you and I be? So we have to understand it's not always what we want. Oh, you still don't believe me. The Bible said that Paul, Paul had a thorn in his side and he prayed. The Bible says that he prayed three times, three times. He prayed, God removed the thorn from my side. And the Bible says that God did not remove it. Not only did he pray. He begged. He, he didn't even go to God demanding, decreeing and declaring and claiming it. And my healing is here in the name of Jesus. I'm healed. No, he went to God asking, God, please remove this storm from my side. He went to God with humility. And guess what? God still didn't do it. But what did God say? My grace is sufficient for you. 
Uh -huh. Ooh, how many of you could accept when God say, my grace is sufficient for you? Now, I'm not telling nobody to have a poverty mentality. I'm not telling anybody to live in sickness or any of those things. What I am saying is this. Sometimes God will say no. If God says no, there's a reason. Number one, maybe it might not be for you. It might not be for you. God says no, because it's not for you. And he knows that. He knows ahead of time. He sees your end. He see the end of that picture. It might not be for you. Number two, he could say no, because maybe he want to, he want to teach you something. He want to, to show you humility because sometimes God don't move certain things in our lives. And sometimes God doesn't give us certain things because he want to keep us humble. Because some of us don't know how to have and get the blessings of God without our heads being swollen. Sometimes God wants to keep us humble. And most of all, number three is to me is most important. He's protecting us. God is protecting us. When he says no, he is protecting us because we don't see the end of the picture. We don't see the end result. We just see what we want and we want it for now. When it comes to things, even when it comes to our healing and stuff, yes, those are good things to acquire. Yes, we want to be healed. We want to be free. We want to be able to serve God and the beauty of holiness. Yes, that is beautiful. I don't think God will deny those things. Sometimes, he's sovereign. He may not always heal us, but we still believe it. We still going to pray. We still going to petition heaven. So I'm not no way telling nobody not to pray and believe because faith is the very thing we need to believe that he will do it. Faith doesn't say he's obligated to do it. Faith is us believing he will do it and that he can do it. We can be asking for things that is not in God's will period. It's not no later. It's not no wait. It's just not of God. Somebody may want this. They may want that car, that mansion on a hill or whatever. And I'm telling you, it can be for your detriment. So our prayer should be God, whatever your will, it's all good. Your will is good. It's acceptable and it's perfect.